let us all remember that we are in the most holy presence of God. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those sins against us. Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. Amen. I will continue, O oh my God, to do all my actions for the love of you. Our Lady of the Holy Rosary, pray for us. St. John Baptist de La Salle, pray for us. Leave Jesus in our hearts forever. In the name of the Father, of the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. All right. So our lesson for today is about American literature. At the end of the unit or the lesson, you should be able to identify the characteristics of American literature, discuss the four literary periods that help mold American literature and differentiate the masterpieces from each of the literary period. So the first part that we're going to discuss is about uh, the colonial and revolutionary periods. So in 1630s, the British immigration went to Boston and then uh, the, the topic or the main, main subject of literature during that time was about religion, literature, and technology, right? So uh, the, when the Puritans uh, and the Protestants who followed the, the Bible in the strictest manner, uh, during that time, uh, they are dominating England. And at this moment, there was the invention of the printing press, Cambridge, Boston, New York, in Philadelphia and Annapolis. So which means that the, uh, when there is printing press, the faster that the, the literary pieces will be published. Now, because of that, English had become the local language as well as the preferred language for literary writing. So during the colonial and revolutionary periods, uh, these are the notable religious writers. First is John Winthrop. Uh, he is a Puritan who influenced the government and religions of other colonies through his writing. And Edward Winslow, who wrote several works that were of massive value to the historian of Plymouth Colony. And these are the other uh, writers during that time in the colonial and revolutionary periods. William Bradford, Anne Bradstreet, Edward Taylor, Michael Wigglesworth, and Nicholas Noyes. So as I you can see here, um, this, uh, these poets, of course, um, use the American English verses, and most of the time, they talk about the doctrines and verses about metaf metaphysical tradition, which the, the literary piece are rhymed, just like the other, the other periods that are the other uh, countries in such periods during the colonial revolutionary periods they are strict in terms of the 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 format or the language that's being used unlike today right so during the colonial and revolutionary periods there had been a rise of the african and american literature uh, because of course we already know that during the, uh, that time is that the African are considered as slaves and that they have no right to, to make literary pieces. But, of course, uh, like Phyllis Wheatley, um, he was a slave brought to America and he, has, he, he had the courage to write uh, about criticizing the British Empire so that the slavery would not be tolerated. And uh, during 1765 to 1783, so there had become the revolutionary tone, which there was a protest against the British Empire 
And during this time, Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Paine are, of course, the personalities which are uh, famous. During, uh, and there are lots of satires. Uh, satires are the kind of rhetoric that employs an assortment of devices to critique society so that you the the satire will expose the flaws and ridicule politics so so uh, there are many satire writers like john trumbull francis hopkinson and others and according to norton anthology for american literature so the authority of cler clergyman in scripture making way for democratic principles um, you increase the uh, the increase in population help the account for the greater diversity of opinion for religious and political life as seen in literature in this time of course the more people or the more populated we are the more diverse our opinions will be And then came American Renaissance, which is the golden era of American literature liberation. And, and uh, the literature for democracy and for the people, which means that there had, had this unique style. American literature had this unique style, which is uh, about the literature which from which Washington Irving, William Colin Bryant, James Fenimore Cooper, uh, which tackled about local color, the environment of America, uh, with the texture of the daily life for the literary tradition. And there is this fresh look about the influence of British and the famous writers emerge with two groups, um, which are the Transcendentalist and the Dark Romantics. So the Transcendentalist believe that knowledge could be obtained through intuition, contemplation, inner spirits, and not merely about uh, senses. And these are the major writers of the movement. You can just read uh, the names of the, the major writers. I think you are familiar with uh, Edgar Allan Poe, right? 1809 to 1849. And also Elizabeth Peabody, which the Dark Romant, which uh, is an example, her works are an example of, of Dark Romantics, where, which explored the darker side for grotesque and gothic and also melancholic uh, subjects between good or evil. And during this period as well, so there had become uh, the rise of women writers. So women writers paved the way so that they would be heard and because they are empowered gradually uh, due to access to education and despite this but despite the rise of w women writers uh they're just uh their their work are not not that many compared to to men writers but during this time harriet beecher stowe and fanny fern which the writer, the writer of Uncle Tom's Tobin, Cabin, sorry. So it ignited the civil war within the American society. Realism in American literature, that's why it's called realism. So this is going to be about the portrayal for of actualities of life. Uh, the famous Mark Twain, uh, he is the writer of Tom Sawyer and the Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. So there was a rise about uh, the simple uh, uh, life of being an American. I think, I hope that you are also familiar 
uh, with with the uh, with two stories because this had become already an animated uh, film or also TV series. So anyway, uh, Twain, according to uh, Northern Anthology for American Literature in 2007, there is such thing as Twain style, wherein uh, it, the style is influenced by journalism and the, the vernacular direct, the, the language that is used is direct and highly evocative, but humorous, which changed and paved the way how Americans write. Because the characters that Twain uses or used is about real people. And the sound is using American local dialects, which is from the regional accents. Now, uh, there was a new approach, which is about objectivity and fidelity. And the literature during that time is when you read the, the devices, like, for example, when you read the masterpieces of, of the New World, like Geoffrey Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, it's more technical, right? But during this time, there had been that, that frame, which is narrative, which is a story within a story. And the vernacular language, again, is being used or was used. So these are the real realism writers. Their pictures are, are here as well. So I think you are familiar with um, Sidney Porter, right? And also Thomas Nelson Page. Okay. So, if we talk about American literature and modern or and postmodern periods, so there is a is a rise about subjectivism, which means that from external reality, you examine the inner states of consciousness, and in many cases, drawing on modernist examples like the style of Virginia Woolf and James Joyce or explorative poems like uh, T.S. Eliot. And these writers uh, chose to write about uh, like anything that is personal to them. All right? Like for example, in T.S. Eliot's work, he uh, he wrote about uh, cats or wrote, ab wrote about fragmentary, which means uh, it is to it's about the continuous flow of thought, and you don't need to to follow any coherent style, which is different from the olden style. Um, that's what I like about the modern writing which you have you can make your own style you can you can write whatever style you want um unlike before that it is too strict so the writing is free so anyway let's read this this one yes uh i'll give you time to read this poem right Yes, this poem is actually just an excerpt of the whole poem. It's, it's much longer. But this one is, I like it because of the alliteration in it. Uh, the, the T's and the F. And also how the writer wrote it in such a way that you're going to really adopt with how the cat thinks. And how the cat might speak if in case it speaks right but anyway this is just about a name of a cat 
of how we name cats and how the cat likes the the name that we're we're going to give them so anyway the modern writers are this uh i do love sylvia plath um there's something about her writing that i admire in terms of it's dark and it's a very true um anyway for the other postmodern writers um they are Anne Sexton, Rita Dove and John Ashbery. I hope if you have time you you need to or you if you want you can read through their works so that you will know that they have this different uh, point of views and style which makes them uh, which makes them different from uh, one another and you might a good thing about uh, a thing about literature is that you will know like what for example someone who lived on that kind of century or in that year you will know and you will feel how the person feels during that specific time and because these are modern writers, so their experiences is more relatable to us than of those who are from the 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 old writers, right? Because of course, um, they are different in culture and thinking. But but that's what I like about reading. Uh, postmodern and modern writers. Anyway, I hope you learned a lot from this lesson. If you have questions, don't hesitate to send me a message. You can ask me anything. All right. Uh, you have my, again, my Facebook account. And also, I'm just a message away. That's it. All right. Um, another thing is that. Um, of course, you have to answer the activities, and I will also upload this uh, video on Schoology. All right, so let's pray our closing prayer. Let us all remember that we are in the most holy presence of God in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginnings, now and ever shall be, where without end. Amen. I will continue, oh my God, to do all my actions for the love of you. Amen. Our Lady of the Holy Rosary, pray for us. Saint John Baptist de la Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. God bless. See you next time.